Okay, so this is what actually inspired me to do this video. You know, all of my chats with AI, a lot of the times it seems like I'm talking to some genius. And this is the first time where you get to see what the AI is thinking before it's speaking. And what got me was how, well, let me just play it for you and then I'll share my opinion on it. Let's go. All right, so now in this next example, I want to show you how a question was really unexpected and I almost broke deep sea. Nomaditsu. Hey guys, do you remember when ChatGPT launched their O1 model, codenamed Strawberry? There was huge hype around it, and it was because this was the first model that could think before speaking. And giving it this ability unlocked PhD level intelligence. And now there's a new AI that gives us this ability for free, and that's what I want to share with you today. And I want to share with you why this is important how this works and why I think this is cooler than ChatGPT01 and how to get it for free. So let's jump in. So let's start off with why this is such a big deal. If you remember a while back, OpenAI released this five levels of artificial intelligence and it shows the progression from where we started to AGI which is artificial general intelligence where it could do the work of complete organizations and you could see here we started with the chatbots where you could have chats in conversational language and that was big enough but the next level is the reasoners where they could think at human level problem solving and this is where the O1 model took us to the next level where it would have a reasoning step and think about its response before it speaks and this is the first time that a big ai company formalized this and released it as a finished product so how does this actually work before with the original chatbots they would immediately give an answer based on the input so you just input your prompt and out comes the output and already that was revolutionary and it took us so far so how does it work with o1 reasoning well here you'll see that for level two they go through a chain of thought before they give their answer. So here on the first turn, you would have an input, it would have some reasoning, and then we would take that output and put it into a second step of reasoning. So that becomes the input, and then it does some more reasoning, creates a new output, and so on. And it could go on and do this for multiple steps. And then after it does all of these reasoning steps, it comes out with the final answer. So that seems simple enough, right? But let's check out what the results were from from adding this reasoning step. You can see here that O1 ranked 89th percentile in competitive programming questions, placed in the top 500 students in the math Olympiad, and exceeds PhD level accuracy on a benchmark of physics, biology, and chemistry in the GPQA. So this is massive. And if we look down here, you can see in the orange is the amount of intelligence that O1 unlocks this reasoning step unlocks and you can see in math it just dramatically upticks physics chemistry etc so it seems simple but what was really cool is that it unlocked so much intelligence so here's another neat thing about this is that they found that the longer they gave the model to think with more of these reasoning steps the more reasoning phases it went through the more accurate the answers would be so this became a new way to scale intelligence before they could only scale the intelligence during training but now we could scale intelligence after the training just by giving it more time to think and go through these cycles so now we get to the free version of this which is DeepSeek r1 so you could see how OpenAI had developed this reasoning technique and it unlocked PhD level intelligence. And unfortunately it was behind a paywall. So you would have to be subscribed to ChatGPT to access this kind of experience. But now DeepSeek, which is open source, has provided this to anybody to use for free. And on DeepSeek, you could ask 50 of these reasoning questions per day, which is quite ample. And it's pretty competitive with the actual paid version of ChatGPT where they limit you to 50 of these reasoning questions. 
Now you might be wondering, what's the catch? How are they able to give this away for free? Well, it's a marketing tactic. So they are giving away 50 prompts per day to attract developers so that they could get a taste of how good this thing is and then use their API, which they do charge if you want to develop an app using this kind of reasoning engine. All right, guys, now for the fun part, I'm going to show you a live demo of how these look like in their reasoning modes. So here I have DeepSeek on the right side and I have toggled on DeepThink, which is their new reasoning mode. And on the left, I have ChatGPT with O1 preview selected, which has advanced reasoning. So I put in the same prompt, which is the famous how many R's in strawberry prompt, and I'm going to try to hit them at the same time. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a delay between these, but I'm going to try. Okay, so here we go. And you could see that there's thinking going on on both sides. And there we go. So both ended up with the same answer. But here's the really cool thing. And what I love about DeepSeek is you can actually see everything that the AI is thinking. Whereas ChatGPT's 01, they caught a lot of flack because they were not revealing the secret sauce. They were only showing this truncated summarized version of the thinking steps that ChatGPT was taking. And actually they were banning people who would try to investigate further and try to prompt ChatGPT to figure out what they were using for their reasoning steps. So that was pretty shady and kind of uh, not cool on the ChatGPT side. And that's why I think that DeepSeek is way cooler for this reasoning mode because you can see everything that it's thinking and how it arrived at the answer. So now I want to take you through some examples and actually have you listen to what the AI is thinking as it's reasoning and I have two fun examples and let's get into that okay so this is what actually inspired me to do this video is this was my first question to deep seek and it took 17 seconds to think and the question was how many R's in strawberry and when I saw this answer it just seemed so cool to me because it was like you know all of my chats with AI it seems like a lot of the times it seems like I'm talking to some genius and this is the first time where you get to see what the AI is thinking before it's speaking and what got me was how well let me just play it for you and then i'll share my opinion on it let's go all right so i've got this question how many r's in strawberry seems simple enough but i want to make sure i get it right okay first thing i need to do is look at the word strawberry let me spell it out s-t-r-a-w-b-e-r-r-y wait is that right let me double check s-t-r-a-w-b-e-r-r-y Hmm, that seems off. I think it's S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y, but maybe I'm missing something. Wait, actually, I think I might be miscounting. Let me write it down. S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. So I see an R after the T, another R after the E, and another R before the Y. That seems like three R's. But that doesn't sound right because I think strawberry only has two R's. Maybe I'm confusing it with another word. Let me try again. S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. Okay, starting from the beginning. S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. So the third letter is R. Then there's another R towards the end. Wait, is there a double R there? S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. So yeah, it looks like there are three R's, but I'm pretty sure strawberry doesn't have three R's. Maybe I'm spelling it wrong. Let me look up the spelling of strawberry. Okay, it's S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. So according to this, it has two R's. Wait, no, this shows three R's. Hmm, this is confusing. Maybe different spellings exist? Or perhaps I'm miscounting. Let me focus on the pronunciation. When I say strawberry, I hear the R sounds, but I'm not sure how many times it actually appears in the spelling. Maybe I should break it down syllable by syllable. Strawberry. So... Straw has one R, and berry has another R. That would make two R's. But in the spelling, it seems like there are three. Wait, maybe there's a double R in there. S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. So after the B, there's an E, then R, and another R before the Y. So that's three R's. But I'm still unsure because I've heard people say there are only two R's in strawberry. Perhaps I'm overcomplicating this. Let me just count the R's in the word as I write it. 
S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y, R-R-R. That's three R's, but I have a feeling that's not correct. Maybe I need to check a dictionary to confirm the correct spelling. Looking it up, strawberry is spelled S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y, with three R's. So, according to this, there are three R's in strawberry. But why do I have this lingering doubt that there are only two? Maybe it's a regional spelling difference or something. Alternatively, maybe I'm confusing it with a similar word that has two R's, like hurry has two R's, but that's a different word altogether. No, that doesn't help. Wait a second, let's look at the etymology of strawberry. It comes from straw and berry, combined into one word. Straw has one R, and berry has one R, so combining them might lead to two R's, but the spelling seems to have three. I'm starting to think that the correct spelling indeed has three R's, so the answer should be three. But I want to be absolutely sure. Let me check another source to confirm the spelling of strawberry. Yep, it's S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y with three R's. Okay, I'm convinced now. There are three R's in strawberry. Maybe I was just overthinking it earlier, doubting myself for no reason. It's easy to second guess when you're not entirely sure, but reliable sources clears it up. So, to sum it up, strawberry has three R's. To determine how many R's are in strawberry, follow these steps. Write down the word, strawberry. Break down the spelling, S-T-R-A-W-B-E-R-R-Y. Count the R-R's. The third letter is R. After the E, there are two consecutive R's. Total R's, there are three R's in strawberry. Answer, there are three R's in strawberry. So that was just, it was just so fascinating to hear an AI think that through. And it just seems so uncertain about itself and it seems so fragile and, and unsure of itself. But then when you see the final answer, it makes sense and it's very concise. So I thought that seeing the thoughts of the AI was just so cool and it kind of gives a window into the mind of an AI. So yeah, that that really blew my mind and that's that's what inspired this video. And I hope you could appreciate and like were entertained by that. That was just, for me, that was really cool. It, it gives like a personality or a, a different dimension to the AIs. It feels way more human when you could hear it thinking things through, doubting itself, che double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking the answer. So that was, pretty cool. And now I'll share one more example with you. All right. So now in this next example, I want to show you how a question was really unexpected and I almost broke deep seek. And this really caught me off guard because I thought it would be a different kind of question that would break deep seek, but have a look here. Okay. So I thought that, okay, maybe if I give it like the trolley dilemma where we give it an ethical problem of, you know, should it kill five people that are on one track or save those five people but kill one person on the other track and for this one it thought for 25 seconds before coming up with an answer and you can see here it did do a lot of internal introspection before it came up with its answer now here's another one where i thought okay how do we achieve peace in the middle east sustainable peace and i was surprised it only thought for nine seconds before coming up with its plan so i was like hey it, it thought about the trolley dilemma for 25 seconds but Middle East peace, it only took nine seconds. Now this one caught me off guard completely. Uh, I don't know if you remember the question, would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? This had Deep Seek think for 205 questions, by far the longest it's ever thought in all of my questions for it. And you could see here, it really went deep on this answer. And I was going to do a full text-to-speech version of this, but it would take way too long. Uh, comment if you actually want that to hear the entire conversation but it was epic when i saw this generating and how much it was considering every angle so i'll give you a little preview of the first paragraphs and so you could get a sense of how deeply it thought about this question all right so i'll just do like the first couple paragraphs here all right and let's go all right so i've been given this question would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses at first glance it seems like one of those fun hypothetical scenarios meant to get people thinking creatively. 
are just to have a good laugh, but if I take it seriously, there's actually some interesting points to consider here. Okay, so let's break this down. We have two options, fighting one duck that's the size of a horse, or fighting 100 horses that are the size of ducks, whom on the surface, it seems like one big creature versus many small ones. But there's more to it than just the numbers. First, I need to visualize what a horse-sized duck would look like. Ducks are generally not very strong or dangerous, but if it's the size of a horse, that changes things. A horse-sized duck would probably be a lot heavier and more powerful than a regular duck. It might have stronger beaks, bigger wings that could cause more damage if it flaps them, and maybe even sharp talons if ducks have them. Plus, being the size of a horse it could potentially trample me or knock me over with its body weight. On the other hand, 100 duck-sized horses. That means each horse is tiny, about the size of a duck. So, we're talking about miniature horses, but there are a lot of them, 100 in total. Now horses, even small ones, can be strong and agile, but if they're duck-sized, their strength might be diminished compared to a full-sized horse. However, having 100 of them could mean they could swarm me or attack from multiple angles. So that was just a fraction of the 205 seconds that it was thinking about this this philosophical problem of the ages and i just thought it was so entertaining and so funny that it it invested so much of its resources to figure out this question but it only took nine seconds for peace in the middle east so you could see here like you know it's it's considering you know potential for injury uh the element of surprise <laughs> it's just it's just fascinating so that um was truly entertaining and i think this is why i would recommend deep seek for your deep questions for your reasoning questions because you get to see inside the mind of an ai and you get to hear their thoughts and it's really fascinating whereas on ChatGPT, they hide the thoughts and they just summarize it and they even prevent you from trying to understand the thoughts of the ai so yeah this is definitely worth checking out and let's wrap up now okay guys let's recap chatgpt01 unleashed phd level intelligence in ai thanks to their reasoning step and now DeepSeek unleashes a similar intelligence for free and in my opinion DeepSeek's reasoning mode is much cooler as an experience because it lets you see the ai's thinking and it doesn't hide or punish you for trying to see that thinking and I think it's just fascinating to be able to see the raw thoughts of an AI. And my recommendation for how to use this is just, you know, you have 50 free deep reasoning prompts you could do per day. So how I use it is I would just supplement however I use GPT-4 or Claude or Perplexity, whatever my query is, I'll throw it into DeepSeek as well and see what it comes out with. And I like being able to see what the AI's thoughts are just to get familiar with how they think or at least how deep seeks reasoning works so that's just like a fun extra layer you could add to your everyday prompts and of course this reasoning mode is supposed to be a lot more accurate when you have more complex reasoning to be done in prompts so that's my recommendation for using DeepSeek, and you could use this completely free right now at deepseek.com so guys what did you think I hope that was helpful and valuable to you. If you found any value from that, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, share it with a friend. It really helps the channel grow. And I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Nomaditsu.